Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things I'm your good friend Bradley, and today, I have a tobacco review for you. This is another one of these reviews that have been requested many, 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 many times. It's a tobacco that I've had many, many, many times, and I just, for some reason, haven't gotten around to reviewing it. Some people thought that I had some sort of prejudice against bulk blends, which this is. Uh, but that is not the case. I don't have any prejudice. If it's a good blend, it's a good blend. But I finally have gotten around to reviewing this. It's a baggie. Um, this is actually a baggie of Peter Stokeby's luxury, luxury bullseye flake. Um, I get this from my local tobacco shop, but they just call it bullseye flake. But I have asked, specifically asked the owner, and he said this is the actual Peter Stokeby Luxury Bullseye Flake that is produced by Stokeby. It is available only in bulk that I've been able to find anyway on American websites. There are some people who say you can get one and a half pound boxes. Um, I don't know how that's packaged. I haven't been able to find any evidence of that. Perhaps in Europe there are other sort of configurations, but I've only found it in bulk. I pay a dollar, or a dollar an ounce, I pay eight dollars an ounce locally. This is in Washington state where we have high tobacco taxes, so eight dollars an ounce. If you extrapolate that, the average tin is about 1.76 ounces, sometimes two ounces if it's American. Um, so you'd be paying around sixteen dollars for a tin if this were, you know, a tin of 1.7 or two ounces. Um, if you get this online though, at least in the US, it is much, much cheaper. Smoking Pipes has it in bulk, starting out at $3.22 an ounce. Pipes and Cigars starts out at $3.35 an ounce. Four Noggins starts at $3.97 an ounce. And then all of those get cheaper as you buy more quantity. Um, like I said though, I pretty much always just buy this from my local B&M. It's a good yeah, $8 an ounce. I could get tins cheaper online, I suppose. But, you know, let's say you're in the mood for a vapor and you don't have anything on hand, this isn't a bad option. So there is no tin description because there is no tin, but I wrote down what they said on smokypipes.com. I don't know where they got this. I don't know if this is their own work, but now I'm going to copy it and I will read thusly. <clears throat> Peter Stokeby's Luxury Bullseye Flake is a delightful blend of Virginia and Perique with a touch of black Cavendish, thinly sliced into neat bullseye coins. So there you have it, the blend type. It's a Virginia Perique, but it does include Cavendish as well, which leads us into the blend contents, Virginia's Perique and Black Cavendish. But it's unflavored Black Cavendish. It's not the really sloppy, gloopy, American-style Black Cavendish. So let's get to the vital stats. I don't know why I'm looking around. I've got them right in front of me. Let's begin to read them out. The flavoring on this one, none detected. The cut, so many people call this so many different things. I've always called this a coin cut. Other people call it a curly cut. Um, some people call them flake medallions, but they're coins. I'll show them to you. All right, I don't have a tin of Peter Stokeby's Luxury Bullseye Flake because it doesn't come in tins. But what I do have are a couple of these medallions slash coins slash whatever you want to call them. And you can see here, what gives this blend its name is that little bullseye of black Cavendish right in the middle. The outside is Perique and Virginia. It's rolled up into a big log and then they cut it into these coins slash medallions. This particular batch is pretty moist, um, but I've definitely gotten others that are really dry. It really has nothing to do with Stokeby. It has to do with who's storing it and how it's been stored. So your mileage may vary. I find that two coins fills an average bowl quite nicely, maybe with a little bit to spare. I know a lot of people like to fold and stuff two coins. I prefer to rub it out. But there you go. I think it's pretty eh, pretty nicely presented. There's other coin cuts that you might be aware of, like Escudo is probably a little tighter. This is a little looser um, the way it's spun, but it works quite well. Excellent. Now on with the vital stats. Strength on this one, I'm gonna give medium. I'm gonna give taste medium mild. Not a super, super strong tasting blend. Nicotine level, mm, medium. It's, it's another one of those blends that I, I didn't really feel anything either way. It didn't strike me as being super, super weak and it didn't, it never knocked me on my butt if I smoked this, you know, on an empty stomach or something. So I'm just gonna have to give it medium. Moisture from tin, not applicable, obviously. There's no tin, and depending on where you get this from, 
People store their bulk tobaccos in different ways. This particular batch I have here is pretty moist. I've had some batches that are really dry. Maybe it was in the jar for a very long time, so there's not much I can say about that. And then the packaging, as I said, I've only found it in bulk, but there might be boxes, one and a half pound boxes out there somewhere. Now I have my tin note here, but I guess we have to say bag note. Let me shove my nose inside. Mmm. 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 Yes. This is very grassy, very sweet, and it has just a hint of a sort of spicy raisin bread kind of aroma to it. Very nice. I'd say uh, sometimes tobacco blends uh, sort of give you an appetite for food. And this definitely is one of those uh, makes me hungry kind of blends. Quite nice. And then the room note, it's a Virginia blend. It's sort of sweet. Um, Virginia to me is sort of the quintessential uh, or the burnt aroma of Virginia tobaccos is sort of the quintessential smell of tobacco. Doesn't quite smell like cigarettes. C cigarettes often have a lot of burly, at least in the U.S. But uh, it's very tobacco-y. Um, not very spicy, even though there is the perique in there. Lingers a little bit. I don't know. It's all right. In my opinion, it smells good. Other people might disagree. So let's get to the actual review notes. I have eh, about two thirds of a pipe full left here. Before I get too deeply into flavor, I wanted to give a quick note on packing your pipe with these medallions or coins or whatever you want to call them. Um, when you saw the cut, you could see that the coins were about this size and they're pretty good size to just take two and maybe fold and stuff them into a pipe. That works, and I know some people actually prefer that with this particular blend. I really prefer to rub it out because to me, with those little bullseyes of black Cavendish in the middle of this blend, to me, when you fold and stuff, you'll light it. You'll be getting only Virginia and Perique throughout you know, a good portion of the bowl, and then suddenly you'll hit one of those little bullseyes and it just gets really sweet really quickly. And to me, it kind of throws off the whole blend. Some people might like that. I don't. I prefer to rub it out, uh, you know, really vigorously. <laughs> it always sounds funny when you're rubbing things out vigorously. And actually, Peter Stowe could be on their website. They recommend rubbing it out as well. That seems to be the preferred method, or at least the method they think you should use to enjoy this blend. Obviously, you can smoke it whichever way you like, but I do prefer to rub it out. And then mechanically, depending on the moisture content when you get it, like I said, it can vary widely depending on where you got it from and how long they've had it in a jar. Um, to me, it's pretty easy to rub out. It's fairly well behaved. It does have a tendency to get a little bit, sometimes with, with certain flakes, medallions, what have you, when you, as you pack it down and smoke it down, it can form this very hard lattice in the bottom of the bowl that's hard to light and hard to keep lit. This has a little bit of that. It's not too bad. Um, so I'd say I'd give it sort of medium marks on smokeability, but it does have a tendency to bite me a little bit. And I think that has to do with the black Cavendish. A lot of blends that have black Cavendish in them tend to bite me. That's just kind of my own personal body chemistry. Might not be the case for you. So anyway, let me relight it now that I've gotten all that out of the way and we'll start talking about flavor. The first thing I notice when I light this up is the Virginias. Um, they are, to me, a bit raw and young tasting. And that's not to say they're super flavorful, but they just sort of have that kind of a little bit of harshness and they differ considerably from certain blends like my all-time favorite Elizabethan where blends that have a more mature dark Virginia flavor or um, a lot of the Gawith blends where it feels as though the Virginias or tastes as though the Virginias have been aging for years and years and years. These taste very fresh and very raw and I think this is a blend that would really benefit from age. So if you took several ounces of this put it in a canning jar and put it away for a year or two, I think it would really mellow out those slightly harsh Virginia flavors. 
for a Virginia Perique blend, I would say this has a fairly high proportion of Perique. I definitely get a pretty good dose of, of peppery spiciness, a pretty good dose of that tingly mouth and nose feel. Um, not too much in my opinion. I like a good, a good bit of Perique in my tobacco blends. Um, but it's definitely noticeable. Some people who are sensitive to Perique might be put off by that. But to me, it's actually a bonus in this blend. It's a good thing. So once you start getting down into the bowl a little bit, the flavors mix a little bit, especially if you rubbed it out well, I get a lot of hay, a little bit of fruit, sort of that figgy, raisiny mixed with kind of a citrus fruit from the Virginias, um, a lot of peppery spiciness and tingle, and then I get almost a, a vanilla-like sweetness, almost too much sweetness. This is a pretty sweet blend. Virginia blends are pretty sweet in general. This is sweeter. I can only assume that's because of the Cavendish. And it's almost, for me, a little bit too sweet. I don't have much of a sweet tooth. I don't like, well, that's not true. I eat, I eat candy sometimes, but it's not something that I crave very often, things that are very, very sweet. And especially in my tobacco blends, I prefer um, I prefer more on the bitter end of the spectrum than the sweet end of the spectrum. And this is definitely much more on the sweet end. And like I said, I think because of that Cavendish, it does have a tendency to bite me a little bit if I'm not careful, even if I am careful with it. If I were to smoke more than one or two bowls of this in a day, I would definitely feel it in my mouth. It doesn't always agree with me. That being said, I can still smoke it and enjoy it, but I just have to be a little more careful and a little more mindful when I do smoke it. And again, that's not the case with everyone. I don't, I don't believe that just because it bites me, it's going to bite you. Um, but it's something to bear in mind. So, Peter Stokeby's Luxury Bullseye Flake. For me, this is a very decent Virginia Perique blend. And even though it contains a little bit of Cavendish. I am going to still call it a Virginia Perique blend. And especially for the price, um, depending on where you live in the world and in, and in the country, like I said, here it's about $8 an ounce locally, but there are some places where it is very cheap that have much lower tobacco taxes. And then if you can get it online, you know, paying three fifty dollars or so for an ounce, that is very, very reasonable. And I know that there are a lot of people who really, really love this blend. To me, like I said, it's a decent Virginia Perique a little too sweet and a little too bitey for me to become, you know, a daily favorite. But it's something that I do have on a fairly regular basis. Like I said, it's almost always available locally at my um, tobacco store, my brick and mortar tobacco store here. So I will pick up an ounce or two here and there and I smoke it and I enjoy it. I just don't love it, but you might. And it's worth checking out. And for the price, if you can get it, you know, for that $3.50 an ounce, uh, $3.22 at smoking pipes, 335 at pi pipes and cigars, and 397 at four noggins. It's definitely worth trying because I know a lot of people who love it and you might be one of those people. So thank you so much for watching the review of the tobacco that is in this baggie, Peter Stokeby's Luxury Bullseye Flake. I've been your good friend Bradley, you've been the audience, this has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later. <laughs>